relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But if it gets you better, you, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good, but this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody, I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was? Before I was me, I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. This is a special show. Now, I know I've said that 500 times before, but this time, I mean it. <laughs> Harry, how you feeling? You good, baby? Oh, Dante, you know me. I'm, I'm having a tough time keeping these gators down. But other than that... It's difficult. It's difficult. Pimping ain't easy unless you practice. Dre, you ready to rock and roll? Yeah, man. You know, are you a little excited about this because we got a legend on the on the, on the on the podcast right now. So uh, let me introduce him real quick. Crazy y'all. Uh, uh, this is one of the 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 godfathers of hip hop. Changed the game. Uh, was one of one of the most creative dudes in, in back in the days when creativity mattered. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, give it up for Lord Jamal, y'all. Give it up for Lord Jamal, y'all. Hey. Thanks for What's thanks good? for doing this, bro. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, I was uh. So let me just real quick. Uh, we just did. We I did. Godfrey had a um. Uh, Godfrey did the show a couple. We've done it a few times. Godfrey, we had Godfrey's birthday, and uh, and I met Gas Digital it, Network. Yes. Yeah, That's yeah, what? and I met I uh. I, I met Lord there and and Rod Rod Digger was it was crazy for me because you know like I grew I what I said was I had I I got you I got your music on cassette tape like I, <laughs> like I popped it and then bought another one <laughs> right and so you really telling your age now yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I didn't even I didn't even, I didn't even try to scotch tape it when it popped I didn't even I didn't even try to scotch tape it I just went and bought another one because I didn't want to mess it up I heard that story from a lot of people. Like seriously. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happened? Like you would really rock your shit till it popped and oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Like it, crazy just to watch, you know, the meet dudes who you you know they uh you know it it, it the music shaped your life. Do you know what I mean? Like you you the indoctrination of 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 what it meant to be black. Is uh sorry, Harry, leaving you out for me. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Go on, guys. As long as people understand, I'm not white. I just want to get that out there. <laughs> All right, you Caucasian man. Oh, so, stop so, that rumor. I'm, stop I'm Hispanic and Armenian, and I'm tired of this. 2020 is not a good time. You smell like mayonnaise, nigga. You're a white man. <laughs> Look, just because I talk like this because I want to have health and dental Hang on, insurance I'm grab real quick. is nobody's yeah, yeah. business. <laughs> Look, and I'm keeping notes and I'm bringing back the information for everybody else so I'm doing my part <laughs> I'm keeping notes. you a double <laughs> agent oh my god the, the, you don't understand how many I mean I've worked in a couple uh, rail yards and different things yeah 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 nobody does a background check before they just start shooting off <laughs> I'm gonna just say because Harry, Harry's a dirty Armenian with Ecuadorian with an Ecuadorian mother that's wild for the night so uh <laughs> <laughs> So we sent him in undercover, Lord. We sent him undercover. He comes back. I'm going to tell you, I, people don't know this, but uh, 
Harry knew that all lives mattered way before it hit the hit the news. He knew it. He knew it back when it first when, when it was in the infantry the infantile stage. He knew that all lives mattered, son. I was in the corner, just just I I nod my head. I go, huh? That's interesting. And then I pull out my little notepad. I write down the names. I make mental notes. And I go, all right, he's not going to be any good. <laughs> Yo, Harry called me up in 2005. He was like, this All Lives Matter thing, what does this mean? I was like, I don't know. I guess we'll put it, just put it up on the whiteboard and we'll. we'll <laughs> I was telling Dante about Karens in 2011. <laughs> you knew the Karens was coming. Lord, what you was going to say? Lord. No, no, no. He just, yeah, he's, he's, he's living in the future, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. He just, so that that's our undercover, our undercover, our double agent to find out what white people talk about us. So that's it, man. Um, it's not pretty. I'm just gonna give you that. It's <laughs> not. It's not pretty. Oh, we know it's not. We know it's not. I don't know. If he, that might be new to you. We know it's not pretty. There's that, that's never a question. Um, uh, Lord, the the um, one of the things that we do is uh is uh just. Wanted to talk about your, you know, the podcast and some of the stuff that you're doing and you were blowing up on Vlad real, real heavy. Um, and one of the things that we kind of do, this is Man School 202. If, um, and what we're trying oh, to do they, is... Email. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, and one of the reasons why, we, why I catered the podcast towards men is because you can't really fix a relationship from the woman's side. I don't, at least I don't think you can. Well, not as a man. Uh, yeah. I, I kind of feel like uh, I've always said that a woman is a reflection of the guy she's fucking. So um, <laughs> so when, when she's that, reckless, that, it's speak That goes over well, by the way. Yeah, I don't they care. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. But it is. I mean, you know, I, I always I always say you couldn't, you know, if, uh, if, if, um, if, 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 who was, if, if Oprah was getting hit over the head with a cookie sheet because she didn't put enough chocolate chips in the cookie, she probably wouldn't have been as, as prosperous. You know what I mean? It's, it's, so we, 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 at the, the union of man and woman is the thing that makes, you know, that's life. And, and I think that guidance, we got to be better dudes. You know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. Well, we all got to be women. Yeah. Uh, I, and I think what happens is, is is there's so many dudes that don't have a um they don't have any guidance into into understanding what what the manhood is and uh and and, and this is a this is the thing because you I mean you you when did you when did you uh when did you really break as an artist uh what do you mean like all of that yeah like like when you're when you when brand new being first broke like when did y'all blow up. Like uh, 89, 90, around 21. Yeah. Is he loud enough? Uh, if you mean him low, he's a little loud. You're a little low. Am I? Yeah. A little bit. If there's a way you can raise it that way. You? Is that better? Yeah, it's better. Okay, yeah, it's right. better. That's better. That's better. Yeah, yeah. So, like, in 89, you blew. And so, and how old were you when that was, when that was going down? 21. It was, huh? He said you're 21, I think. He said you said 21? Yeah. So the, the thing is, you, you grow up, you know, as a tw you know, 21 years old, and then you grow up in the business, and you learn that, uh, that the business is such that um, it, the business helps you to grow up as a man. You know what I mean? Pretty much. And, and, and to find that, uh, you know, just the dealing with business and ha knowing the things are like one of the things that we, we consistently talk about on the show is I have an acronym and I say it's called ACE. It's uh, authenticity, credibility and empathy. And so being truthful, um, saying what you mean, meaning what you say and doing what you say you're going to do when you do it and to have the empathy to look at the person that you're dealing with and what, what they're actually going through too in a, in a reasonable way, you know, right. and we can't do business without doing that as well. I mean, you can't do relationships without that, but you definitely can't do business. It's, it's the thing is like men don't have that guidance like you were saying. And the weird part is the responsibility that you're supposed to have as far as relationships go, as far as, uh, you know, being the captain of your ship, you have, that's a that's double the responsibility. And we never yeah. think of it that way, especially from our perspective where we're saying it comes, the relationship goes through the man. Yeah. That's double the responsibility and no job training 
whatsoever for that. Like yeah. a police officer? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, that's perfect. Just show the fuck up, start shooting. That's it. Just you get a you get a blue suit and a gun, and they give you a picture of black dudes, and they're like, "Yo, shoot these dudes." <laughs> yeah, but at least uh, in that job you get a gun. As as a dude in a relationship, if you got you're defenseless, you got no skills whatsoever. That's hand to hand combat. And no. you, got, you got one solid option: leave. That's my rule. <laughs> Just retreat. The second she's not listening to reason, I'm like, "All right, yo, deuce." <laughs> I just disappear. I'm vanishing. I'm out. God, Lord, talk on that a little bit. Well, shit, the police, at least they get about six months of training. Yeah. And like with relationships and trying to figure out being a man, a lot of people don't get the proper training that they need. So they just, right. and they just trying to figure it out. You hear an echo when I'm talking right now? Yeah, a little, a little bit. Little bit. Yeah, I don't usually hear this echo. One. Yeah, there we go. One, two. Sound check. Sound a little better. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, um. Yeah. So we don't have instruction manuals for this type of shit. We just right. figuring it out. You know what right. I mean? Um. And unless you come up in certain times, see, we might have come up in times where. If you didn't have a direct male figure in your household, right, there might have been somebody in the community, yeah, that was a surrogate, and he's the one that instilled a lot of these codes and 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 you know, just oh, like, like if there's one black dad, that's everybody's black dad. Well, you know, it was the dude, the the, the righteous dude in the neighborhood, or the sure. uncle, you know, the uncle that came through, but still not having him in the house every day. Definitely made a difference. So you got bits and pieces. You know, you you got class one through six, and then somebody else got three to seven. And you know, if you're lucky, the rest of it. If you're lucky, you're walking by while he's changing the tire. Yeah. So you could learn that part. But if you if you if you weren't there, you missed out on that lesson. Yeah. yeah. And now maybe you know y'all come together amongst yourselves, and you know you'll put the, the pieces together. Yeah. Figure that shit out. You know what I mean? Then it's all. It's also half the dudes wasn't listening when they were getting the lesson anyway. You know, it's like you know, you know, but everybody's kind of you, you're young and youthful, so you don't pay. You think you know everything, anything. I say relationships and sex are the two things that you're supposed to know how to do with no practice, and in no other situation do, would you ever be expected to know what you're doing. Unless you have, you know, nobody don't even ask you to play ping pong w well unless you practice ping pong. But you know, you supposed to know. You supposed to know where the G spot is. You know how supposed right. to know how to fuck. You so supposed to know how to really street. Right, right, right. You gotta, you gotta automatically through osmosis. You supposed to know this stuff. That's a lot of pressure on a young man. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, it's funny. I don't know if you heard of the um the 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 MGTOW, M G T O W S. You know what that is. No, you know the uh the incels. You heard of the incels? Is the, the, the white boys are killing up, killing women, <laughs> saying that nah. they they owe them that the women that you know they're going in a yoga studio and they they're killing women and shooting women. It's like a whole group of well, they're, well, they're involuntarily <laughs> celibate. And yeah, they're, 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 incels goes for involuntary celibate. So what they're saying is that they 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 can't get no pussy. Exactly. Basically. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, it's hard to put Got that it. on the police sheet, though. Yeah, that's like, exactly I, what it is. I want some pussy, but um, <laughs> the man, pussy don't is, want me. No, I'm celibate, <laughs> but I'm involuntary celibate <laughs> because yeah, the demand I'm just is there. A ugly motherfucker. The, the demand is there. It's the supply. The, the, right, I'm right, issue. right. <laughs> the supply for me though, because there seems to be a supply of a, a huge supply. I got stuff. all you want, <laughs> but. For me and my guys, yeah, it's like yeah. if Golden Corral, we have no supply. Yeah, just wouldn't let you in. <laughs> like yeah. Golden Corral just wouldn't let just you. Right, everybody right. else get to eat, but not you, you fat little ugly ass nigga. I'm involuntary starving. <laughs> That's but it. I'm, I'm surprised you heard about this. Remember the dude that went in, went up in the yoga studio and shot everybody, shot a bunch of people in the yoga. So one of the you know crazed white dudes that went in and killed the people up. It's a lot of them, so it's yeah. easy to mix them up. 
Well, it's it it was a whole it was a whole it's a whole thing, and now because of technology and whatnot, these dudes who are it's nerds nerds anyway, they know how to do a website. So they got videos and graphics and and all kinds. So it gives them this kind of this safe haven for this kind of this this sick thinking, you know. And yes. the reality of it, it's really I'm just afraid to be rejected. They're afraid of the whole deal of life, like all of it. Yeah. So and then they're, and then they're blaming somebody else because because you ain't got no game. Or and 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 the reality is that you're gonna lose. It's like I do the consultations all the time, and a guy will call me up about a specific relay. Yo, I met this girl, and then I, and I'm like, dog. Uh, realistically, you don't even have the foundation to 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 to, to even be in the position that you're in. So this whole thing, I want you to understand, you're probably going to fuck this up. I can guide you through it because I've been through it many times, but you're going to fuck this up because you don't have the, you don't have the constitution. So it's interesting. We was talking about music um, when we was on Godfrey's and I was saying that, you know, that this mu you know, everybody's, they, they, you can get a Casio or, or a Yamaha and a synthesizer and people are making records and they're not, like you were saying, you had to go out and battle and, and spit and write and, and, and that was, you know, that's how you got, there was an authenticity of that. And then there was such a, um, like when you look at the difference between, between Brand Nubian and look at, say, uh, De La, like, you you know, in the context of hip hop, it was such a different feel. You know, everybody was trying to do their own, you know, their own sound and their own style, and and it's so different now. You know, absolutely. I mean, now it's more so yeah. just get a record sold because uh, I think before the barrier entry makes things like different. Like, yeah, but I, I mean, Lord, Lord, Lord so if you could do. Yeah, if you could, if Lord, if you could talk about that, like that, like the the context of trying to that moment when you're like, I want to do this, but I want to do this in a unique way, and 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 I'm I'm not I'm not trying to cheat the game, like like there was no cheating the game, you know. Well, I mean that's something that you like every artist had to figure out back then. And like these days, they just take that out of the equation. Like I can literally come out and sound just like Drake or Lil Wayne mm -hmm. and be successful today. See? Right. Whereas, you know, back in the days, they'd have been like, oh, you know, he's sounding like this one. Like plenty of dudes try to come out and sound like Rock him. Right. You don't care about them no more. You right. Know? Now, was it was it the, the is it is was it the artist that policed that? Or was it just, or was it just, was it the, the, the audience that policed that? I feel like it's the culture. The culture is, you know what I mean? The culture had certain codes that people stuck to, you know what I mean? So nobody told me, like, damn. Because I had people, rappers that I looked up to, but I knew I can't rap like them. Right. Like, I could take the best of what they're doing, but how do I find my own voice? Like, right, your own expression of that. Right. And, and and even my voice. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, like you have to know what your voice sounds like and how to manipulate your voice. Because you can hear your rhymes in somebody else's voice. You know what I mean? That's not your voice. Like, you, know, you might hear it in your favorite rapper's voice. So you got to find your voice. Um, and that's something that I feel like consciously, or, or the ones that became successful, we consciously knew that that's something you had to do. Right, right. So we figured it out. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because, like, a lot of times, like, especially when I do the consultations, um, I try to talk in the context of, of, of how to relate to this person to, to where they're at, you know? So... For instance, um, like for instance, like the, what I and I'm always seeing these patterns. So it, it's interesting is is being a man in hip hop meant a certain level of integrity that you had. That even though you respected the dudes who came before you and you admired them, but it was your job to to, to move the culture forward 
in a real way, not like it wasn't like, yo, I just want to get the likes. I just want to be I, I want to make the money. It was like, I want to make the money, but I want to I, I have an obligation to the righteousness of the culture, you know? Right. To the roots of the culture, to, 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 to staying within the parameters of the culture. Right. You know what saying? Um, and so that included like no biting. See, you can't take lines from another rapper and then mm. use them as yours. That's called fighting. Right. Um, that's some shit we would have never done. Like, right. you know what I mean? We can keep moving the culture forward, but you got to stay within certain parameters. So no biting was one of them. Being original was one. Um, you know, it wasn't always... I'm not going to act like all hip-hop had some righteous, conscious shit in it, but... It did have that. You see what I'm right. saying? We had all kinds of different hip hop back then. Well, I, I'm not saying righteous in terms of, you know, the ethical righteousness. And he goes, look, I, I, I've said this to dudes. Like, like uh, it's a funny thing. Is that, look, we did this show before with Patrice O'Neill, right? And I get this all the time where dudes would be like, oh, that's Dante, that's Patrice O'Neill, sidekick, da 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 But I, 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 and I say, look, and not to take nothing away from my dog, because he was my brother and I love him to death, but you can't, you can't call yourself a pimp if you buy him pussy. Like, there, you know, there's no ethics in that, but the, 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 the chick that sells the, 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 the guy that buys the pussy is the trick. Or the mark. The chick that sells the pussy is the, is the hoe. The guy who gets the money from the transaction is the pimp. You can't just change the definitions as you see fit. If you pay him for pussy, then you're the you're the trick. So so the guy in the well, strip club who's making the it rain is say, a trick. The guy the, making oh it yeah, rain. if you right. making it rain and you trick you trick. Now don't get me wrong. You can make it rain in the context of of your manhood. But the point is, when you're making it rain with the intention on impressing somebody, that's the problem. Like I've I've gone to strip clubs and tip strippers but the point is it's in the it's in the there's an ethical thing even about that where your this chick is working she's trying to get her money whatever whatever I, I, like i've even said right. this like a, where a chick was checking me and i would be like yo i tip her and i would be like ma go get your money we'll talk later these guys are tipping because they're trying to get some pussy yeah they, yeah they're trying to impress this girl oh shit look at how much money he tipping me Fuck it, I'm gonna go with this nigga after the fucking shit. Right, right. You know what I mean? And and, and he's trying to get some. But so now they redefined it. You got dudes like Lil Wayne talking about it ain't tricking if you got it. If you got no, it's still tricking. No, no, it's definitely tricking. <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> tricking. Um, it's just big tricking now because right, you got more. That's what I'm saying. Um, you still a trick. You still getting tricked into paying for something that you should be able to get for free. That's why it's called. And, and it's not, and I'm not saying that I haven't been in situations where I've bought a gift or something, but, but it was out of the context of this is what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted you to have. You held me down and now I'm going to hold you down. But it, there's a, it, and, and a lot of times people, they don't <laughs> understand it. So it's like when I'm, well, I guess what I'm saying, the righteousness in hip hop, the righteousness was being original T understanding the principles and then applying the principles in a, in a creative way that was your voice. That, that is the righteousness of hip hop. Not that you necessarily was conscious or not conscious. It was, it was original. It was creative. Understood. And I, I get this all the time where dudes would be like, oh, you know, because dudes would be coming at, like, trying to, like, I've been doing this podcast eight years. And, yo, that was Patrice's dude. Patrice, he's biting off of Patrice. And I'm like, dog, that was, I love him. That was my dog. But I, I wasn't buying pussy. I wasn't going to Brazil buying pussy. So I was never a trick. You he know, was stimulating the economy. Yeah, and and let's be honest. I was I was the the, the job creator at the time because I was pimping. So I was what they call about the job. I was the job creator. You know, so so I should have got the. But also, who you gonna pimp in the economy? economy out this motherfucker. <laughs> it's it's so it's so when I I get in the comments, you know how niggas come in the comments, and I'm like, dog, you you don't. You, that doesn't take away from who he was creatively, but I'm saying those, the principles of that 
is you can't change the definitions the way you want to change the def definitions. So if you call yourself a rapper, there's a certain there's a certain criteria that you need to be to to to, to you know what I'm saying? Uh, like you, you, I mean, you speak on it better than I do. Yeah, absolutely. If you can be a rapper, you know, according to the righteous terms, where you should be writing your own shit. You know what I mean? You shouldn't be stealing from other rappers. Um, you know, yeah, you should be performing your own shit. Real rappers don't um, lip sync at a show. Um, these new rappers do. Right. Like, not even rhyme over the record. Right. Like, at, you're supposed to rhyme for real at a show. Right, right, right. It should right. be an instrumental. And then you rhyme over that with your real voice. Right. These dudes will rhyme over their own record, stop in the middle, let the record go, and, and come <laughs> back in. Type of I think these niggas is winded, though, Jamal. Like, <laughs> well, part, of being, part of, of being a real MC, part of being a real MC is to being able to have breath control. Yeah, they tired, yo. Like real breath, real MC. But if you tired, you can't say you're a boxer and then you go, you go I'm tired. I like I'm not in any sort of sense defending these tired oh. body niggas. Oh. 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 Go I'm, ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, you don't think Mick Jagger gets winded? Like, the, yeah, but, but, they get but winded. I'm, but, when they, you, but you do the job. You do the, exactly. I got you. Oh, you the job. Yeah, all you got to do, if you get a chance and you, you ever board, uh, do James Brown do, uh, do James Brown on the on the on the uh on the Tammy show and watch him do the full a fourteen minute set like just have you ever seen that Lord you ever seen him the 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 he's got the any James Brown performance yeah but this that. this one is this legendary I probably seen it but yeah. here's the thing I, I you know I'm fifty two we still do shows right now like yeah and. Do a, at least a full hour. You right. know what I mean? Oh, and also, my, my bad. I no think lipstick. it's better to care. What's that? Like the the caring, like passion for your art was like. Yes. You got like a you got respect for having like passion for the shit you was doing. Now it's like you should be as dis like as disconnected from it as you possibly can. It's just like another thing, like a check off. You just right. get to like strong. Try to act like Man, I just started rhyming uh, last yeah. month. Like, you know what I mean? Last month, yeah. And 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 they seriously say shit like that. Um, and they act like it's all about the money. You see, yeah. where for us it was all about the art form and the expression, and 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 just wanted to be heard, and, and, and you know, you wanted to make money, but that wasn't the be all. Wasn't and you that did it for free? You well, you were doing it for free we were doing in the beginning, it for free. exactly. A long time. Yeah. And so finally, you're like, wait a minute, somebody will actually pay me to mm. do some shit that I would do for free anyway? Like, this is great. Well, it's interesting because, like, I always try to, you know, talk about relationships in the same context of that. And, and what I mean by that is, like, for instance, you have a guys who will be like, yo, I'm the kind of guy, like, I'm, I'm, I want a couple of chicks. Right. They want I, mean, I want to I don't just want one. I want to I, I'm you know, I want a couple. Uh, this is what I, how I rock. Now, everybody ain't going to put up with that. But yeah, there are people that will there are women that will that fits into the context or the parameters of what. But if you're if you're not honest about it and, and peep this, if you're not honest about it, what you're you're not. It, it's because you don't think that you deserve it. You feel me? Well, I feel like a lot of times if they're not honest about it, it's because they're in fear. Right, right. But they actually fear the woman. Yeah, but why are they in fear of the woman? Because they, they fear that they don't deserve it. You see, like, so well, you... Well, they fear that the woman's not going to be able to handle the reality of their life. A lot of what you're gonna say. What it is is it's the fear of losing. They don't got the courage. Right, and you are, gonna, you are going to lose when you throw that out there because I've done it. So right. I ended up, and by the way, it's a lot more work than people realize it is. It's not an easy thing, but you throw that out there and certain women will go with it because you're honest about it. And certain women will be like, it's not for me. Right. And, and that's fair. It. 
and you lose in that sense, but you really win because the ones that do stick around, you don't have to run around and cheat. You don't have to fake it, fake lie, it. all of that. Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you, most most men go off the premise, and not just men, a lot of people, but most men, when it comes to this, go off the premise of it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. Okay? So they'd rather you know, do whatever the fuck they want to do. And then when they get caught, so oh, please, baby, I'm sorry. Like, you know what I mean? Instead of coming out, you know, in the front and be like, yo, is this cool? You know what I mean? Like, I want to be with you and I want to be with her. Like, right. Yeah, right? but you, you gotta, here's my thing. You gotta, like, that only comes from a place where you think you're worthy of that. So you, you, you gotta feel your worth to women. So like, I, I use the example like this, like Mayweather, May, May, Mayweather was walking around with five chicks, right? And he was like, it was his, these are my girlfriends. Now, at any given time, one of them could say, yo, I really love you, but I don't want to do this no more. You got to pick me, otherwise I'm out. And then he would have his private jet drop her off in, back at Cleveland. Um, he was like, oh, you know, sorry to see you go, but I, I understand because he feels that because of his money, his power, whatever, the fact that they can run around in a, in a mall and shop for $20,000 handbags, there's a, he's saying, I'm worth this because I can do this. And, and if you want to be part of me, and he feels he's worthy. Now, that's the extreme situation. But the real situation is just in the context of you being a guy who works for fucking sanitation, and you go I'm and you go feeling that you have the work. Exactly, exactly. Right. So the fear is to cover up the fact that you don't feel like you have the work. I always say, if a dude is five foot four and he lies about his his height and says he's five foot six, it's because he don't think that five four is enough. Right, but then he's also worried that not only he don't think that. That the girl or whatever is not going to take it. Well, she and don't. She, they think what you what you like. We teach people how to how to treat us. Do you know what I mean? Right. So if you're in question of you're in question of your own personal value, then you're teaching her that you're in question of your value, whether you whether you're lying about it or not. Security. Yeah. 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 And most, just like he said, most people are scared of law. Right. That's scared of. Well, damn, if I tell the truth here, it might backfire on me. I might lose the whole shit. And it will it, it will in some cases. Right. And you got to be prepared for that. Right. But, but they don't want that. Like, right. people want to just, you know, not have that. They're trying to control the odds, I guess. You know what I mean? But I, I think the, the thing is, like, guys that I've counseled, I mean, even Harry. I mean, Harry Harry was, was one of my, my, my cases. And... <laughs> yeah, I remember the moment when he decided what his value was and you could just feel it because the minute somebody even questioned what his value is, he was like, ah, you, you're not into it. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I remember fucking with this chick and she, you know, we were dating and then she was like, uh, all of a sudden I couldn't get no blowies. I couldn't get no neck. Right? I couldn't get no blowies. And I was like, yo, so I, I, I hit it like, yo, you, you, uh, you don't like me. She's like, yeah, I like you. I like you a lot. I was like, well, how come my dick's not in your mouth? Like, like I don't understand why. And she was like, why you got to be so crude? I said, because I'm not, I don't think you're important enough to, to lie to. It's better. It, I, I think you're important enough to tell the truth. So I, this, is, this is a deal breaker. You feel me? This is a deal breaker. So if you're not fucking with that, I get it. You you could. I, I respect that. But then we gotta we go that way. Like, how about, how about I've taken that a step further? Yeah. Okay. Okay. She's getting the blowies, but she don't want to swallow. Oh, that's a deal breaker for me. Yeah, well, if it's a deal, right, right. But I'm. That's the crazy wow. thing is that. Yeah. <laughs> Why should I have to stand for this? Right, right. <laughs> are you crazy? What are, what are we, savages? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, this is <laughs> he, he pulled it out and went, I'm appalled. <laughs> this is <totally laughs> uncivilized. This is just, uh-uh. Nah, 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 nah. Did you just spit that out? Did you just spit? Uh, did right. you just, uh, My gift? 
<laughs> oh hell no! Like, nah, never. My been. word, I My never. Uh, peace, Shaw. <laughs> shit, like, 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 like. <laughs> Problem, like, oh. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. They're like, good day, ma'am. Good <laughs> day. <laughs> Well, I remember, you know, speaking of all the things you taught me and knowing your value, there was a situation where I was seeing multiple women and I was upfront about that. And one girl was kind of, you know, I don't, I keep it to myself. Once I tell them, I don't want to throw it in. You don't keep rubbing it in their head. Right, right. And she just assumed that it was just me and her after that, because when you're with me, you're with me and I treat you as such. And then she was just like, wait, what's with these other girls? Just, I saw you on a, a such and such app and you're saying like, what happened to us? I go, listen, I told you that, you know, I, this is what I do. And I go, and she goes, I don't think I want that. I go, then, okay, we don't have to do this. It's fine. I don't ever want you to do anything you're uncomfortable with. We don't have to do this. And then she was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I think I'm happy with what we have. I'm happy. But she immediately changed her bargaining position because – she realized that her she life went was- in hot. Yeah. She went in hot, like she had a like she had a straight. She was going for the royal flush, and then she she was sitting there with a three and a seven. Yeah, well, you, <laughs> thought you lose your leverage when it's like okay, then be out. They're thinking them being out like you'd never do that. Oh well, no, I keep with it. It's like oh, hang on. I used to. I mean, I, I'm married. Is that easy for you? I'm married okay. now. I'm married now, but I, without a doubt, I, dog, I used to keep and get the fuck out of my house in the chamber. Like, <laughs> oh, just I kept one in the chamber. For I, I used to throw a bitch out of my house just to make sure I knew how, just to practice. That was your catchphrase. That was your. Uh, <laughs> that was it. You like beans and jelly. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's just, but I think the, 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 it's funny how the righteousness of relationships is the same righteousness that you got to have in the art and, and, you know, in, in, in rap and hip hop, it was the same principles apply it. And what I find more over than not, um, the, um, we think the lessons that we learn are different. But they, they're the same. I always say true wisdom is the understanding of underlying concepts, how they relate to situations that seem irrelevant but really are not. So understanding that cosmic and universal truth, you can take that cosmic and universal truth and reapply it over and over and over again in every situation that you, every situation and it, it reapplies. So I had a, I had a kid that uh, called me up and he was um, like, he, he, you know, he was a hustler, right? But he had moved to another, another. He moved over to the West Coast, and he, and you know, took a, took a, went to school for culinary skills and stuff. But and, they, and I was like, yo, who, you know, how was you close with your dad? And he was like, well, my dad was a gangster and a hustler. He goes, but my my stepfather raised me. I was like, well, what your stepfather do? He was a gangster and a hustler. I was like, well, what your mom do? Well, she's a prostitute and she slang drugs. I go, what about your grandparents? He goes, well. My pops was cool. My grandpops was cool. I go, well, what did he do? He goes, he was a bootlegger. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> I go, what's, I go, what's your grandmother do? Oh, she was a flapper girl. Like, you know, the 23 skidoo bitches. <laughs> oh, man. You come from a long line of gangsters and hoes. <laughs> Three generations of gangsters and hoes. So he got with this chick. He got with this chick, and, he, and the chick had two kids. He had two kids. A blended family. She, you know, she got. She, I think she was a teacher or something like that. And so he he's trying to be a better dude, right? So he's trying to remove himself from the from from the principles of the drug game. So I, I said, so he's telling me that he when he first met this girl, um, they hit it off. They said they were going to blend their families. But she goes, she goes, look, I, you know, I was dating this guy before you and we had planned this vacation. And I'm, a, you know, we're going to go on this vacation. And after the vacation, we go. So I go to him. He goes, he goes, so, you know, I, she knew him before me. Well, so I go, I say, let me ask you. I said, you hustled, right? He goes, yeah. I go, look, say your man uh, gets out of the joint, says, yo, I need some paper. He's like, yo, can you, can you give me a little something, a couple bundles on consignment? You go, all right, you know, I'm going to look out for you. This, here's, here's the bundles. This is what I need back. This is what you make. I go, if he comes back with the money fucked up, right? 
do you give him a half a key after he fucks up the, the, the 15 bundles you get? He goes, no. I go, so... I go, I go, so if he, if, if you give him the half a key, I said, and you give him a whole, the next time you don't give him a bird, right? And let him fuck up a bird. He goes, I go, why not? He goes, cause he gonna make me kill him. I go, fair enough. I go, when you met this chick and she told you that she had a, she had a, a, a vacation, she had to go, she fucked up the bundles, dog. She already started off fucking up the bundles. I right. go, and, and then when you moved in with her, you gave her a half a key by moving in with her. And this is nothing more disgraceful than fucking up a bundle. <laughs> you can't be just, I mean, we all know this. You can't fuck up a bundle. One of the worst things you could do. I mean, it's a big faux pas to fuck up a bundle. <laughs> so I says, I says, so I'm telling him, he goes, right out of the, like, he couldn't understand what was going on. The minute I put it in terms of, he was like, Word, yo. Yeah. Yo, now I get it. Now I get it. She fucked up the bundles, yo. So, so, Why so, you didn't just tell me that in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> so, I wouldn't have been fucking with her so long. <laughs> so, so then he got his shit packed, put his ducks in the row, and he moved out. And I was like, so he called me. I was like, so how, you know, how'd it work out? He was like, yo, I just told her she fucked up the bundles. <laughs> That was an awkward conversation. Yeah, oh. She was super confused for the first 10 like, minutes. What? Exactly. What he just called her, yo, your bundles, it's fucked up. I don't know how to do it. Yo, why'd he break up with you? He's, I don't know. This nigga fucked up the bundles. Yo, up the bundles. <laughs> what's, cra what's crazy is that, like, during the COVID, he was locked down on the COVID, and she hit him up, right? And she was like, he was like, yo, what you doing? I know you got all them bitches in there. Fucking, he like, nah, I'm just on some chill shit, but you could give me some pussy. And she goes, nah, I'm going to let them other bitches take care of that. And she gets off the phone. I said, okay, remember that dude that got out of jail, the nigga that you went to high school with that fucked up the bundles? I go, what if he calls you six months after, after you cut the nigga, you, you, you give a nigga a pass. Cause you don't want to murder a nigga, but you, you get a nigga pass. It wasn't that much money, and you don't want to get. I said, and he calls you later. What are you gonna say? He gonna be? I'm gonna be like, yo, why the fuck you calling me? That's I go. That's the same thing you said to the said to that bitch. Why the fuck are you calling me? In, in all fairness, though, wouldn't you say that this is a, a reset opportunity to see if if she's learned her lesson in that case? I mean, Son, you don't. You go. Even if she calls, you go. What's up? Now, if he don't say, yo, remember that money I fucked up? I got it for you. There's no conversation. Are you giving the dude a reset that fucks up the bundle? Exactly. You don't give him no reset. Are you giving him a reset opportunity? Now, when he fucked up a bundle, meaning this is thousands of dollars he's fucked up. <laughs> it's a couple hundred. Even if it's a couple hundred. I'm just saying. Let's, you know, he fucked up $30,000 for you, no. okay? Right? Now, are you going to give push a reset button and, and trust him with another thirty grand ever down the road? Oh, you I, know, I, I, see I would go even further. If he, if he fucked up $300, if he, can't feel, if he can't deal with $300, how's he going to do a half a bird or bird? You can't. It, the, the logic of that don't even fit. No, I get that. I'm saying if he's getting, if all he wants out of it is get to get laid and he is satisfied with that, isn't that his reset chance? Because of all that, let's be honest, a dude who fucks up the money is going to keep fucking up the money. So you can't not, you can't not lose something. Even if it's just a sexual situation, you're losing something. Because here's the thing, you're messing with this chick that you have no, 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 you have no intention on being with because she's, she's untrustworthy. Right. So now how long is it again until something else happens where maybe you leave some money on the dresser or what? It's, it's your, she's telling you what her constitution is. Now, the only way the only way you you the dude, your, your friend that got locked up gets redeemed. If he calls you up and pop, pop this, Lord, if he calls you up and says, yo, man, I apologize about how I fucked up the money. Here's the money I owed you. Mm. And another, and, and or here's double that. Mm. 
Mm. Here's double what I owe you. I fucked up. Now you might go, all right, I, all right, let's, you know, I, I really would like another opportunity, man. Uh, da, 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 da. Now you might fuck with it, but he's coming with the with the intention on making do, making up for what they fucked up on and doing more, saying, look, I've learned my lesson. This I'm willing to do more. This is important enough for me to be be to so, be a better bitch. B A B B. So how would the broad clean up? You know, going on vacation with another nigga. And all that. Like, what she gotta bring bring you abroad? Like, y'all, Man, you know, that, I mean, that, we can start I, with that. I, I, I'm <laughs> wondering. Like, well, look, that's kind of what popped into my head first. But <laughs> too, I'm just saying. But I mean, even if it was like, look, you know, even if it was like, look, I apologize and stuff. I just, I, you know, it's just, I, I know I fucked up. Admission of how she fucked up, like. I understand what kind of woman you want or what you want for me and what you mean to me. And I don't want to lose that. And so to get, let me, I just need to understand the parameters of where I need to be so I can make this work. Now, I don't, I don't, I, I doubt very seriously if somebody who's fucking up the bundles in the first place is even going to have the words to communicate that kind of sincerity because there's no sincerity in the first place. It's all you're already, she's already denoting the fact that she's self-absorbed and doesn't give a fuck about anybody, but and she's selfish. So for her to even be able to put those words together, it ain't gonna happen. No, I get that for me. Cause I'm trying to think of my own situation. For example, with the, that girl who wasn't into it. And then when I said, if you're not happy, you can leave. No worries. No yeah, problem. But that wasn't a fuck up. It was, that was just like, she's testing you. She's like, like, that's like me saying, uh, here's 15 bundles. This is the money I get back. Right. And you go, that's kind of steep. And you're like, well, that's what it is. And you go, all right, well, that's, give me my shit back. No, 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 I'll get it for you. That's that's the equivalent of what, you know what I'm saying? But it's it's interesting how guys will have the knowledge of that and not be able to apply it to a situation where they're emotionally attached. It's funny how a, a, a guy in that analogy, he's able to deal in the dangerous world of moving drugs, the dangerous murder. world of murder stabbing, <laughs> and yet his his woman, he comes home and he's like, "Boy, I'm clueless. I do not know. I am scared of this bitch. I don't that know." Makes how to Hold up, that's real though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so 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 dudes that was killers on the streets. Yeah, that yo, here come my girl. girl. Their <laughs> woman. Yeah, like like oh shit, here yeah. come my girl. Yeah, or, or or oh shit, this is her calling me. Oh no, no, what? Oh fuck. Uh, Everybody be quiet. Uh, they're like, yo, 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 move the body. Yo, put the body in the trunk. <laughs> yo, what's up, baby? <laughs> like, seriously, like, like, yeah. like, motherfuckers really do have a fear when it comes to these women sometimes, and they don't even realize. Mm. Well, it's, you remember Pulp Fiction? At, at, at one point, Samuel L. Jackson, he goes, uh, he's a hitman, right? Yeah, yeah. And then he goes, uh, oh, is that the big kahuna burger? Because uh, I can't eat those anymore because my girlfriend's a vegetarian, which pretty much makes me a vegetarian. And it's just nuts because you're like, you're a hitman. You kill people all day. All day. Your girl is like, listen, we're not eating meat. And he's like, all right, I, I, guess, get... I guess I'm not eating meat no more. I guess I'm a pescatarian because... <laughs> You kill they people for you that. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I see that. That's the one thing I see that the, the, you know, the, 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 this compartmentalization of of the wisdom, like it, it just to be, you know, I was able to kind of put it in a way that he would understand. But the reality was, he had no like this is to him. It's two different worlds, and it's like you know when. The like the principles that you talk about in hip hop when you were coming up in hip hop is those same principles. It's yo, I I speak my name because I I perceive my value to be that, and I'ma show you. That's the credibility. Is that give me the mic? Let me show you. Let me show you what I do. And 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 in that context, and look, and you could not be. I could not be your favorite r rapper. 
but I respect what you do. I, I fuck with you too. Even now, you may, you know, in some cases you were their favorite and in other cases somebody else was, but you, we always respected what motherfuckers could do. You and I, we were talking about, we were talking about Das FX because Rod Digger was there. She was talking about the, the album she did with Das oh, FX. Yeah, uh -huh. And, and you, you, something that you said that I thought was dope. If you could repeat what you said about the bump skippy the bump, but you were like, yo, that's, that's hot, but. You, what happens after that? Like, how long are we going to do that? I knew that wasn't going to last. You know what I mean? Right. And, and shout out to Dr. Beck. But it was still something that you looked at and said, yo, that, yo, that shit is dope. But, dope, but as being a hip-hop historian, I can see that this is, doesn't have legs, but so far. Like, people right. got too tired of this after a while. Right, right, right. You know, that's what the fuck happened. Right. You know? So... You know, I was always fond of, you know, groups that have things that you can have a running thing that just can keep going. Kind yeah. of, because life keeps going. You know? yeah. And that, that's what you're saying. You have to have layers in your personality and what you do. And that's the same thing as a man. You have to have, as a human being in general, you yeah. have to have layers and not be one dimensional because like you said, it only lasts so long so if it's all based on the money that only lasts so long if it's all yeah, the money on runs charm, out yeah it's only like it's only based on sex that only lasts so long you have to have other skills to keep it going when those other things fail you and here's the crazy thing even with the money even if the money don't run out they get tired of the money like it's like you cornball they like this corny you know what i'm saying it's like the disrespect becomes because it's like that's all you are that's that's it like that's all you got right i mean elvis elvis's wife fucked around on him he was elvis the biggest star in the world yeah. like no matter what the fame how many times have we heard like fucking the pool boy or yeah. reversal lord you was gonna say something Oh no! I had just uh, got a call. Yeah. The uh, yeah, the uh, it, but it's just like you, 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 you see that kind of so that authenticity, the fact that you're growing. You know, I always like with comedy. Uh, you know, a lot of stand up comedy is you could be from Sweden, but there's sh shit that you you're you're you you're afraid of. Like different than, but you, but as a human being, the human thread says I have this joke and I say that um. Yeah, uh, like I've had or I've had guns pulled on me at least four different occasions, and each time I kind of scrapped with the dude, and by the by the grace of God, I was able to get through it. Right? I go, um, and that sounds like I'm bragging until I tell you that I'm afraid of spiders. Right? So if you if you pull a gun on me, I'll fuck you up. But if you got hairy arms and you move them like this. <laughs> then nigga, I, you can take my wallet. You feel me? So it's 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 the 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 human the human thread that that goes through everything, no matter what it is. Especially art forms, there's a human condition. You know, it is. Say again. I'm sorry, y'all. Lord, you said something. I, I'm, oh, I I'm, just said absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It's, a, it's so it's that's you know, that's what we you know, understanding that human thread and and how and that's that's how you uh, I, like I'm I'm pretty cool with um Maceo um, and yeah, yeah Ma Maceo and Maceo was in the audience when I was doing my thing and then afterwards and you know Macy don't put on weight and he had the beard and and he had and right. I, but, he, uh -huh. but he looked familiar but I couldn't place it right so he was like yo I can I get a picture with you and I was like fuck yeah you can get a picture with me and then I'm like I'm like yo I'm right and he's like yo I'm Mace right and I'm like Nigga, can I get a picture with you? What the fuck? This is you nigga, this this is history right here. And him and him and I became boys because he understood that I was on stage, I was pushing. Like like I was pushing the, the art, trying to push the art, at least attempting to do so. And him being who he was could see that in me. And that that was the the vibe, you know. It was like, nigga, I, it was kind of, you know, like when you go, yo, uh, yo, you know, I, it's uh, it's almost unspoken, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, 
Anyway, yo, Lord, Lord Jamal, please, man, thank you for coming for doing this, man. I appreciate you, bro. Without I enjoyed it, man. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, I, I, so dope, man. I'd like to get Ra on if I can and chop it up with her too, if we can. We'll we'll talk about that later. And you know, you got my jack, so whatever you need, dog, I'm here. I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Anything you want to plug? You want to plug the podcast and. Oh yeah, just the Godcast. You know what I mean? Godcast with myself, Rod Digger, and Godfrey. Um, and yeah, check me out on social media at Lord Jamal. I say it again. It broke up a little bit. I said, check me out on social media at Lord Jamal on all social media. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you, man. I really appreciate you. No doubt. You right back, Harry. Talk to me. Uh, you can check out our YouTube page for this uh, channel, for the show, Man School 202. Uh, we're putting up new episodes, we're putting up classic episodes, some clips, a lot of good stuff coming. And uh, also check out Catalyst Wrestling every uh, Saturday morning on Gas Digital and uh, free on YouTube as well. So check that out. Dre, talk to me. Yo, just Instagram and Twitter, Andre D. Thompson, Between Spots Podcast. That's all. Hit me up. Everything with me, DanteNero.com. If y'all need a one-on-one -on -one consultation, just go on DanteNero. Got to click consult. Everything, all the social media is on my website, DanteNero.com. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution of being podcasted. If you like what we doing, yo, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. We are out.